this meeting to order, however, because we have a very long agenda tonight. Um, first item on the agenda is public comment. And I know Jay Bruds is with us tonight and had asked um, to be included for public comment. So Jay, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate it. Um, I'll be super quick. Um, I wanted to comment, uh, Trish had the TV on a couple weeks ago and I saw the Board of Selectmen meeting on TV and you guys were discussing the cannabis ordinance. Um, but And it caught my ear because it wasn't being discussed as an ordinance at the time. Uh, it didn't seem like it was the cannabis policy. And I was like, I think they got to do an ordinance because I had actually read the statute when it came out. So I saw that the town attorney recommended that you go down the ordinance path. So I agree with that. And I think that's the way to go. I also think, and this will come up if you have hearings on the ordinance, um, and I can talk more about it then. I'm not sure if if prohibiting the possession is within the scope of the statute that empowers the town to make that or not. And I don't know if Rich really went down that rabbit hole in his analysis. So you might want to think about that. Um, and that was really all I wanted to do is, is uh, mention those. I just didn't want the town to get kind of sideways on that. Um, it seemed fine, you know, otherwise. Uh, and then the, the last thing is if anybody ever has any questions about from one viewpoint, one person's viewpoint on the charter, uh, commission, um, you know, I'm not speaking for the commission, but I'm always ready to answer questions about what we were thinking or what I was thinking, really. I can only talk about that uh, on that whole process. So anybody here, if anybody's asking you guys questions, you want to talk to somebody, I'm always ready to answer questions. So uh, that's all I got. Thanks, Jay, for that offer. Um, I appreciate it. And um, are you a cannabis expert? No, no, <laughs> I am not. Um, I had read the law though, so and I remember it caught it stuck in my head the ordinance part of it. Ah, uh, well, thank you for sharing that because um, I haven't even read the law yet, so I've been depending on others. Um, all right, I don't see anyone else. Um, Jim, do you see anybody else for public comment? Okay, Jim, shake, shaking his head, no. All right, next is approval of the minutes. Um, let me just ask first, um, has anybody found anything here that needs an addition or a correction? You know, in, in reading through it, if there was something, my memory is not that good that it could possibly escape me, but I didn't see, I, honestly, I didn't see any anything glaring that stuck out on me. So. I would I would move yeah. the adoption of all the minutes of all the minutes. Okay, is there a second for that? A uh, third. Thank you, Bob DePietro. So it's been moved by Bob Mora, seconded by uh, Bob Mora, moved by De Bob Mora, <laughs> seconded by Bob DePietro, that we accept items A through E minutes of our meetings. Uh, is there any further discussion? No, I found no nothing glaring either. Okay, thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. um, he hearing nothing, um, all those in favor, I'm going to do the roll call for the secretary, Bob Mora. Aye. Bob DiPietro. Aye. Kim Miller. Aye. Mike Aramita. Aye. That's unanimous. Uh, the chair votes aye. Um, we also have with us tonight Patrice Carson um, with an affordable housing report. Patrice. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you'd like me to talk about, but I can give you a little background and where we are so far. Would that work? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, as you may or may not know, the legislature passed a universal requirement that all towns in the state of Connecticut adopt and maintain an affordable housing plan. This was in 2017 when that law passed. And until recently, most towns um, haven't really done anything or taken this seriously. Some have addressed it in a POCD, but, um, and, and we touched on it in the POCD, but I don't think enough to create an affordable housing plan as the state is looking at. Um, also, in requiring this, the state really did not provide any real clarification on what the plan should include, 
And it's been essentially seen as, as an unfunded mandate by a lot of towns. However, in all towns, um, including Bolton, uh, we are subject to the requirement and we need to develop and then maintain an affordable housing plan. And this is supposed to happen at least every five years with the first year being um, by June, 2022. Um, so even since 2017, there's still very little statutory guidance. Um, there are very few plans out there that have actually been done. Um, I would say less than a handful of the 169 municipalities in the state. Um, we do have the good fortune that our interim CEO has worked on a few of these plans. So he has a little bit of background on them. Um, this statute that requires this is Connecticut General Statute 8-30J, and it simply requires that the municipality adopt a plan, uh, complete an affordable housing plan and a housing needs assessment. Um, <clears throat> the finished plan, which I said uh, needs to be done by June, 2022, we will also incorporate it into our plan of conservation and development. So it will qualify as an update to our plan of conservation and development. And um, a lot of the work, especially the housing needs assessment part of it will qualify as a sustainable CT project part. Um, we have, as you may know, a, a new Yukon intern this year. His name is Nick Tatro working from uh, in Jim's office. And one of his um, duties is to work on this plan. When, when we interviewed the interns this time around, um, we were trying to give them something where they could start and take it to finish so that they could put their name on it and call it theirs and take it with them when they leave as an intern and say, this is something that I you know, started, researched, did and completed. And, and I think it's a great project to be able to take with them. Um, so it'll help us and it will help Nick as well. Uh, Nick is meeting with Mike D'Amato and I, and um, every now and then Jim will step in, but we meet weekly just to see what his status is and how he's going. He's been collecting data and looking at some other plans, looking at the statute. Um, and there is also a guidebook or two out there that he's, he's been reviewing. He's also working on a survey um, which we are going to put out, we'll leave it up on the website and maybe send it out in our email blast, put it out through our social media. Um, and it's, it won't be a long survey, but it will be a housing needs type survey. Some of the questions may be questions that we asked in the plan of conservation and development. So we'll have a little bit of historical data when they were asked back in, you know, four, four years ago or whatever. And then some of the questions might even be the questions that were asked on the study that we just did, uh, about a year and a half ago or whenever. So, and then there will be some new questions. So he is also preparing a PowerPoint plan that would sort of walk anybody, including the commissions through the process, which we feel is an important part of him doing this project. Um, and I would uh, think he'd be presenting that to the, plan, uh, to the Planning and Zoning Commission and to the Board of Selectmen. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, the plan is going to, yes, go ahead. Did I'm you just going to ask a quick question. This is sure. really, uh, the, the, does the statute define what affordable housing is? It, it, or well, is it, it used to be a regional thing that in, in right. a different area, it would be one level and another area, it's a different level. Is that still... Is that still right. the there, are, there are there are income levels and and then what you spend as part of your income um, that would qualify as affordable housing, um, and then this is just a plan to look at really a, a needs assessment. So it's what do we have now? What other types of things do, do, does the town want and can it support? Mm -hmm. And then the plan would then based on you know the residents and and people the survey. And, and then the data that we pulled together, would we'd create the plan and then bring it forward to the public, you know, for their review as well. Um, so it's, it's more, Bob, it's not really like um, creating regulations for affordable housing. It's more of a, a guide as to how the town okay. sees itself being able to provide affordable housing. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
Welcome. So, so I have a question. So like who would own it, right? So I was reading some of the stuff in the state guidelines and it says, you know, it's not usually owned by the town. It's usually owned by an in-town nonprofit, you know, organization. And it can't just be affordable housing, meaning, you know, there's a ranch down the street that's, you know, only $80,000, right? But it needs a ton of work. So it's more than that. So like who owns it and subsidizes it? I, I'm just struggling with how this would come together, like in Bolton. Um, it could be a private entity. It could be a nonprofit entity. It could be um, the, the 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 town could create, or I guess recreate, uh, a housing authority that could help to run it on its own or in partnership with someone. You know, those would all be things that would be maybe recommendations in the plan. And another question too, uh, Kim, I caught a, a just a, a, a item that you mentioned and that was uh, subsidized. Uh, under that affordable housing, it doesn't necessarily have to be subsidized housing. I mean, that's not, I don't think that's, that's, uh, there's a real separation there in, in at least it has been in the past uh, on affordable, affordable housing simply means, all right, you can structure some something where uh, your land value might be lower in a different area, that makes that would make your property more affordable other than a, an agency putting up money to subsidize a construction of a building or whatever it is. I, I think there's, a, is it still that wide open? Uh, um, yeah. To, to qualify area? as affordable housing, there are certain types of loans if you take them they are considered to be then qualify your property as affordable housing for the period of the loan. Okay. Um, and then there's the 830G statute, which is a yeah. deed restriction that is filed on the property. And that carries um, for the last 30 years. Yeah. And so if it's sold within that 30 years, it can only make so much of a profit and, yeah. and, and it has to be okay. um, rented or available yeah. by sale yeah. for a certain price point. Yeah. That, that would qualify yeah. as affordable housing. Yeah, that's the same. That's been around for a while. Okay, Question. thank you. Question? Yes, yep. go ahead, Mike. Uh, two things, actually. This reminds me of Wells Village in Vernon, which is a uh, group that was developed many, many years ago. And it's a private organization which developed the affordable housing, most of it's senior housing, uh, but they buy it and it's when it's sold, it's sold to another person on the list from the, the organization. And it's privately run, privately funded, and it works very well. Yeah. The problem, we, we have two problems here. One, we don't have anybody that's willing to step up to the plate to do something like that. And number two, most of these properties and, and developments like this are uh, high density. Uh, you know, a lot of homes on a smaller piece of property. And with our barely marginal soils here in town, it leaves us unable to do that high density housing with most of the soils, unless you happen to be along the sewer line. And the last question I have, or the comment is, once we develop this plan, are we in any way, shape or form obligated to move forward on it? Currently, no. I mean, as Cur far as currently, no. <laughs> so, no. That's that's like a definite Thanks. maybe. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> time, right? This is a this is this is one of those things that that could change. The, the interesting piece to all this, as you bring up, um, you know, lack of water and sewer in town, so it does it does stifle dense development. Um, the the interesting part about that is if you were to, you know, the 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 qualifier on 830G is 10% of your housing stock is affordable and then you, you, you reach a level where you don't have to do certain things, whatever it is. Um, Bolton probably could not get to that point. Um, and I say that because every time you add a housing unit that's market value, you then have to add another one to your affordable housing sheet. So it, it it would be difficult to, to, to reach that if you continue to add market rate housing. I mean, we haven't really had many subdivisions in the last um, five years. We've probably had maybe, you know, I don't know, 12 lots created 
in the last five years, but still those are 12 market value lots. Those are not 12 affordable lots. So they're that, every time you would, add a, another how you're adding to your do not your your nominator. So to be divided by it's it, it just makes it harder every time you add a market value house. Now, right. um, senior housing projects of certain values do qualify as affordable housing and, or diverse type housing. And that is was a need that was identified when we did the plan of conservation development, I don't think that need has changed. I think, you know, this study will find something very similar. Um, the other thing it may find is you may need starter housing or some kind of housing that's, um, that people can downsize to. Those are typical um, findings in a, in a small rural town, but, but we'll see. We'll see what the survey says and we'll see what um, Nick's research is and, and um, go from there. I, I also, is there any ch any chance that if we identify sewer and water as our needs to go forward with a project like this, that we could request uh, grants for them to bring that to town? I'm sure you can rec <laughs> you can yeah, request. Not that yeah. I, nothing specific <laughs> for that cause no yeah but i mean yeah, but i mean is if we identify a project that you know say we did identify something like wells village as what we need and then the you know i i think we you know the unfunded mandate is is exactly what it is but you, there would have to be some funding along once we've identified a problem we couldn't do it without funding and it would force them to either pony up the money or back off on us, if you know what I'm getting at. Well, they, they tend not to back off, but if I, if I may, on, on the sewer funding project, right now, right now, the state has so many um, existing sewer system, older systems that I mean, they're in dire need of major, I mean, millions and millions of dollar update. They, they don't have a nickel to, to go into that end. And on top of that, even with the existing, and here's, here's the kicker, where government regulation, is, one hand does not know what the hell the other hand is doing. Even where we do have sewers and we do have land available that could support uh, a project such as that, like a condominium senior housing project, the state required us when we did the system that you could only build uh, what you could support with a septic system in that this is all single family or housing or any type of housing within that district. That's that's the restrictions on it. So basically, you only you know better off than if, if if you didn't have sewers as far as being able to build. And and that's and that's the, the downfall. There's been a number of um of, of folks that have wanted to do uh, a, a, all the projects that you have talked about over the drive-in theater one. And the state has not budged on that. We've tried legislatively to try and go in and do that, and uh, they are they're 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 quite insistent on it. And, and like you say, Mike, that's the rub. They want you to do that, but when there's a, here's an opportunity, it doesn't cost them a nickel to do it. It's just a matter of changing the regulations. But they're adamant in not doing that. Yeah, I know. I remember <laughs> the problems we had with that. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the frustrating, and it's, it's, that's the frustrating thing. I, I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but it really pisses me off that we have to deal with this situation in, with, with the unresponsiveness from the, the, the so-called ruling agencies. I'm sorry. So no, I, I apologize a, for my language. <laughs> no problem. No problem. The, um, sometimes I feel that. The, uh, I have had conversations with a half a dozen organizations who develop senior housing, not-for-profits. And each one of those has said to me, call us back when you have public water and public sewers. Without that, we can't even consider right. the project. Right. So, right. and they said, we don't care that you have, you know, a hundred acres or 50 acres or 200 people. We need some basic municipal services and oh by the way we also need public transportation yeah and living on a bike path doesn't count as public <laughs> transportation so or living on an interstate um so we're kind of between a rock and a hard place here but 
it'll be really interesting to see what Nick's research comes up with as to um, what he thinks our needs are and also what he thinks our current affordable housing stock is. Um, right. Just because we have a one acre, most of our houses have a one acre lot or um, they're a desirable smaller house, um, the prices on those reflect that as well. So. Just a, a note uh, to touch on something Bob was talking about with regard to the sewer. I know that um, Coventry got approval to extend the sewer into Coventry. Right. And I don't know if their approval carries the same restrictions that yours did with regard to uh, housing. Uh, at this stage of the game, no, because it's preliminary. Um, so I'm wondering if that you can't use that foot in the door sort of to go back to the state and say, don't, look. Don't, 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 don't go in my ace yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we're still bidding in the loan. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So what I, what I will, what I will ahead, do please. is when Nick is, Nick is done, which should be probably this Tuesday, um, I'll, we'll let Jim know. And if you want to schedule him for a PowerPoint on one of your meetings, um, mm -hmm. we can do that. I know sometimes his Tuesday evenings, which I know is when you meet are, are tough because he has class. I know on Tuesday nights, I just don't know his schedule that other than that. So, well, we could always do something special for a yeah. half hour, 45 minute presentation. And I think it would be good experience to him to present to us and good experience for us to listen to him. So, okay. If you can arrange that, Jim can probably, or Kathy can probably arrange a meeting when he's ready. <clears throat> Perhaps we could do a joint meeting with the Planning and Zoning Commission. Oh, that would be so great. He, that so might that way he, he gets to do it once and the, the PZC has the perspective of the selectmen and the selectmen have the perspective of the PZC. Yeah, I think that's a good great idea, idea Jim. Jim. Thanks. Um, and maybe we could call all the other land use boards together and make mm -hmm. that ha make that uh, land use board meeting happen as well. Yeah. Because um, I don't know if there's much out there other than updates. Okay. Thanks, Patrice. Um, You're welcome. Moving on to correspondence. Um, <coughs> we have letters from Alan Weedy and letters from Carol Zapadka um, talking about uh, speed issues on South Road. Um, Jim, do you know what the speed limit is there? I, I honestly don't. Uh, I will say that we also got another communication from Ellen Barnes today along the same lines. Um, I don't recall, Sandy, whether I copied you on my communication to our resident troopers or not, but I've made them aware of this concern. And uh, they've, both, uh, they've both been watching it. And in fact, over this last week, uh, Trooper Richmond has been out on South Road, uh, parked in Carroll's driveway among other places along that route. And uh, they've, they've given out several warnings. Okay. Um, what's the next location for our traveling speed signs? I don't know that off the top of my head. Can we um, get one of them over to South Road? I know there's one by the school and I'm not sure where the second is at this point. One's on Quarry Road right now. On Quarry Road? Quarry, yeah. So it's on Quarry and Notch. And I know the one on Notch has been there since July or August. Mm -hmm. So I would think they've gotten preschool data and post-school opening data. So maybe it's time to move one of those to South yeah. Road. <clears throat> The, the other suggestion that I'll mention that's come out of this, um, and our troopers do support this, is on both uh, ends of South Road, there are signs that 
suggest that trucks not use the road for through traffic. Um, Alan Weedy uh, tells us that um, he talked specifically. He spoke to um, well, Vernon, the town of the town of Vernon oh, no. because they were using it as a cut through to go to Willie Waste, and they have since stopped using it. But Willie Waste continues to use it. So one of the suggestions is that we change the signs that have suggested language to the signs that have a truck with a red X through it. So I talked with Lance about that earlier today and we're gonna look into that possibility and see what we need to do to be able to do that. Okay, the one issue that comes up with prohibiting trucks like that is that if there's an accident on 44 or six that happens to be about the only way Around that it. a vehicle can continue to their journey through Bolton. Um, yeah, I don't think we would prohibit it. I think we'd leave the existing signs right. that, you know, that request trucks not to use that route and then use this other sign as a visual to help draw attention to that. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I missed because when, when you prohibit it, it changes your your abilities for funding for highway funding. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. So is the wording just trucks are requested not to use this road type of thing? Correct. Or, okay. Right. That's and what's then, on Williams Road now too. Trucks right. and buses. Right. And and there's and, and from in most cases they do. They, 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 it is avoided when you get a few to go through. But I think th that visual that uh, they're talking about is just it, it just catches your eye right away, and and hopefully you know if it cuts back some traffic, it works. Yeah, um, I can foresee uh, the Williams Road people uh, calling and asking for that <laughs> sign for as second. well. So you probably want to uh, order four of them. <laughs> yep. At least Williams is a little easier to avoid, you know, yeah. as you noted. I mean, it really is, it's the best route between 44 and 6. Yeah, and if the road's blocked, it happens to be the only, so. Right. Yeah. So, all right. Um, any other discussion on these two letters? Or actually three letters because we, Jim had that, has the third one. Um, at some point, Jim, could you ask Kathy to share that third communication yes. with the board? Um, and I'm going to let you talk about this national opioids thing. Uh, I mean, really, it's a, it's a, basically, it's a class action lawsuit. And I think, Sandy, earlier this week, I think it must have been last week, we both received a communication, I think it was from CCM, that really suggests that, that we opt in because it it allows us the possibility of some funds down the road. If we opt out, um, that possibility doesn't exist. It's, it's really pretty much that simple. Um, we include it in the package so that you could read it if you if you wanted to, but I think the recommendation is that that we do what we need to do to opt in so that if, if funding becomes available through this program, that Bolton has the opportunity to get their share. Is, I have a question. Is, is this, I, I, yeah, I just wanna make sure. This is to hop on to, if we did, and if it comes through, allow us to get a portion of what has the feds have settled on yes. that, that settlement. Okay, thank you. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, right now it's uh, 21 billion over 18 years. Yeah. 5 billion over nine years. Excuse me, for a total of 26 billion. Yeah. So do we need a motion to opt in, Jim? Or can we just uh, I think it really do it should be a consent? board decision. So I think yeah. either a decision or a motion, either, either I think is fine. I move, I move that we do hop in on it. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Kim seconded. 
any further discussion? So there's no negative from opting in. It just gives us options later. Yep. Correct. Okay. Correct. And would this be for like, if we had costs because we responded to an overdose or is it for people in town, irrespective of the, what the town did or didn't do? Yes. So I, I, yeah, <laughs> it's all of that, but also the state is gonna get some funding. And if the state chooses to disseminate it through the, through the towns, through some formula, uh, th this is a way to potentially um, participate in that funding opportunity as well. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Bob Moore, I believe you, at, we have a motion on the floor. Um, I, would you consider amending your motion to um, make Jim Rupert the authorized person to sign um, on behalf of our subdivision? Yeah, I, I so move. All right, Kim Miller, you were the seconder. Does that it, do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, I'm going to do roll call for the secretary. Uh, Bob Mora. Aye. Bob DiPietro. Aye. Mike Aramita. Aye. Kim Miller. Aye. Sandy Pirog also votes aye, so that's unanimous. All right, Jim, um, on page three, there are some steps that need to happen before January 2nd, 2022. So you got almost three months to get yeah, it done. Yeah, we won't take that long. We'll get it done pretty quickly, I think. Okay. But thank, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mostly for the minutes. Um, appointments to the Public Building Commission. Um, we have one appointment. We have one applicant at this point, um, Kevin Glenn from 46 Country Club Road. Um, I had hoped to get two more, um, but I haven't gotten them yet. Um, I would like to um, move this, to move the appointment to next month's agenda because one board, one person does not make a board. Right, okay. Do you need a motion for that or, or, or you, we just- I, I think we can do it by consensus, but Mike okay. wants to speak. Yeah, yeah, we had talked before about uh, the potential of doing a temporary public building commission to be able to put- It an is a temporary public building commission. That's all we can have. Right, but when I'm to move forward the uh, RFP for a study on the expansion to the fire station i How think we... that's gonna have to wait to our next meeting until our so, next meeting okay is there something that needs to to happen Get more people for the temporary public building commission okay oh so we we couldn't act as the temporary public building commission i'm not interested in entertaining that one bit even to just do one RFP and get it taken care of? Nope, I want an independent commission to do that. Okay. Um, moving on, there are no subcommittee reports that I'm aware of. Um, so if we move right down to fiscal 21 budget reports. Wow, that was a report. <laughs> Yeah. That was pretty quick. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. <laughs> That's okay. I just have to shuffle some papers here. Do you want me to share a screen? Sure, if you can easily. Uh, maybe not. But I like looking at the end numbers. They look good. Anything 100 plus is, is always a good thing in, on a receipt end. Um, actually, I think maybe it's in, it is in here. It's a huge package, so it's hard to find, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. 
<clears throat> but she she did send it in a great way. Share screen. Yeah. Screen two. Share. Where are you? It's coming. Okay. It's yeah, it's a, just, Sandy it's has working, shared. It's working Sandy on started screen sharing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's coming from Brantford, so it's probably stuck on 91 in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in Brantford? Yeah. October 15th is a week from Friday. Uh, okay. I is would... that corporate tax day? No, that's the um, second, in, well, it's second individual, uh, it's the final individual deadline, and it's also the right. final corporate deadline. Right. So we had, an, we had an October deadline, uh, September, man, September 15th deadline for partnerships, <laughs> a September 30th deadline for estates and trusts, and now we have C corporations and individuals. Is it still trying to share? It, it says, is. yeah, it's still spinning. Oh, at least you got a spin. I just got a notice. I don't have anything. I, I would try it with mine, oh. but this computer is so old that there it is. Weak. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a big package. So yeah. well, I'm just trying to share one page, but yeah. it, maybe I am sharing. Yeah, I think package. you pulled up the whole package. Oh yeah. gosh. Well, that's good because then I'll just keep sharing. Then we can just, just scroll down. down. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're looking at the current year uh, budget report with history from. Uh, 21, 20, and 19. And there are currently no red flags. Jill would have highlighted those for us. Again, you know, she works on encumbering what she can and what she knows about. Um, this is this is really at this point in time of the year, it is um, unremarkable. Anybody have any questions with? Th this page of our uh, budget reporting. Nope. I do want to share with the board, Jim, the news that uh, Jill shared with us today that the um, Columbia student population um, is much lower than what we had budgeted for. Um, and as things look today, we may be about 20, um, not 20, 73,000 and change short in the um, category for the high school bond issue. So Jim, Jill and I are gonna be meeting um, in the next couple of weeks to discuss when that what happens with that, that's not an issue until um, May next year. So right. we may have a better sense by then of another category we can move funds from. Um, and I also want to um, have the same discussion with the Board of Education, um, because if they're not educating those students, I think they ought to talk to us about how we can meet that financial obligation of the town. How many students does that represent? Um, like 10? They had originally predicted 30. We had budgeted, I think, for 28. Yeah. Correct. And there's 21. Yeah. So okay. it's seven students. Seven. It's seven. It's not a lot, but it, it does. Well, it's seventy-three thousand dollars. It's a substantial so. amount because yeah. Yeah, yeah. a good portion of their tuition goes towards the payment, but the yeah, payment, it's like debt payment. eighty or ninety percent. Right. Yeah. So that's it. There's always the possibility that the count goes up, and there's always the possibility that we'll have the extra funds. But sitting here today, it's not something that appealing. Um, any other questions for Jim on this year's budget? Um, okay, let's move on to budget transfers. Um, oh, do you want to look at revenues first? 
since that's next in the package. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, this, this looks also, this also looks pretty good. Um, if you look at, if you look at the categories, uh, the actuals to date is really um, pretty good. Yeah. And this, and, it, and I should say that this is unaudited. That's from last year. Right, from last year. Yep. Okay. The tax collector for June. Um, oh, that this is last year. She actually was significantly over um, her budget there, so she did a great right. job. Yeah. And as of August 30th, um, she, whoops, she's at 90% for real property and personal property and 70% for motor vehicles and supplemental bills haven't been sent yet. So um, that's not bad. No, it isn't for August. No, she does a good job. Since we, our collection date, was a month further out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody who may normally um, have paid or somebody even who has a pending sale may have chosen not to pay and just handle it from the closing. Right. So um, she's not far off. Um, and if you look at where we were last year at the end of September, um, which was our collection date. Um, we were at 97% at the end of September. So hopefully it gets there. And 731 is in your packet. I'm not gonna talk about it because it's history yeah. now. All right, this is final last year unaudited. Um, it looks like um, at the end of last year, we had 714,000 um, to return, um, which is significantly more by, I think, about 200,000 than we committed to um, the Board of Finance. So um, in one way, I'm happy. In another way, I'm not happy. But um, we did meet our obligation and hopefully. but you know i think the important thing to remember is that we we did send a message out and and we requested people to stop spending money correct um and, and you know they I, clearly they did um they, they listened to that message and you know we also you know we had some savings in the administration line item um, we had some savings in the land use office, you know, based on the changes that happened there. We had some positions that went unfilled for a period of time. Um, we didn't, in the administration budget, we didn't spend a lot of money on legal things last year. You know, so, so there, there are reasons for uh, all of this to be the way that it is. And I, Again, I, I agree with you, Sandy. It's a it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, better that way than the other way. You absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I. It's much easier to go to the board of finance and say we were off a little. We're returning more than we're we were off a little. Yeah. We're returning less. Right. Um. So. Okay. Um, budget transfers. Um, one thing that's missing from these, Jim, that we usually get is a reason. And I think she's leaving that reason up to me to explain <laughs> to you. <laughs> okay. So, so th this transfer is recommended by Jill because we currently have uh, Nick working part-time as an employee in the um, assessor's office uh, for Pam, 
we also, uh, because Pam left, Helen was having a difficult time meeting our obligations to get all of her inspections done. So Sandy and I discussed it and we did hire Josh Gaston for a period of time to do some inspections and help us get those inspections completed so that Helen can include those in the uh, in the October report. And so it's really just moving money from one category to the other because of the category that we pay these people out of um, is other payroll and not regular payroll. Changes moving from one payroll Correct. area to a different yeah. payroll area. Yeah. Okay. Right pocket, left pocket again. Right. No. Um, uh, is this the only one that we have to no. do? No, we There's have a couple more. All right. And then we have building and land use, which is the same thing. And again, it's for the same reason. You know, we we've hired a consultant to take over some of my responsibilities. And so we're we're moving money from the regular payroll uh, or requesting to move money from the regular payroll to the other payroll category. Okay. And then this one um, is $1,600 to dues and fees. Who did we underfund? Uh, there was, there was some um, overlap in dues and fees that were paid for Josh and dues and fees that were paid wow. for me. And so we just, we, we didn't anticipate that. And the line item just didn't have quite enough money in it. And so we're looking to move money from the professional and, and technical to the dues and fees. Okay. And that's it, right? That's, that's it. it. All right. So and I, I, I move that we uh, approve the transfers as presented they all have they're, they're reasonable transfers and they're they don't have an impact on our budget okay is there a second kim seconded i'll second <laughs> sorry i went to get off mute <laughs> <laughs> thanks kim is there any further discussion on these bob de Petro, are you waiving for discussion yes, yes. I want to know about the $25,000. How is that um, explained? I mean, the, the first $25,000 from regular payroll yeah. to other payroll? Yeah, he said we consultants. Correct. You... We've hired a consultant to serve as zoning enforcement officer, which is a position that Jim. Um, would have otherwise done. Um, and now that he's in the administrator's office, um, we need somebody to act as the zoning enforcement officer. Yes, I, I hear that. But okay. I, what I don't understand is how you get from regular payroll that money. So, yeah, we, we have two payroll accounts, and one is regular payroll and one is other payroll and we pay our consultants fees out of the other payroll. So for instance, Patrice Carson, who gave you a report earlier this evening on the affordable housing is in the land use budget and is a consultant for the town and not an employee. And she gets paid out of that other payroll category from land use. And so uh, the gentleman we have, Mike D'Amato, who's doing uh, zoning for us, we're looking to also pay him out of the other payroll category. So we will be taking $25,000 of what would have been part of my pay if I was still working in the land use department and requesting to move it to the other payroll so that we're paying all of our consultants out of the proper category. You say so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, Bob Mora. Hi. Bob DePietro. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Kim Miller. Hi. 
<laughs> Mike Aramita. I. And I vote I as well, so that's unanimous. All right. Um, these are some. Oh, that's just the that's, summary that's of exactly summary. what we yeah. did. Right. Um, and then um, these are some earlier transfers that were made. Um, to cover some water invoices and to cover um, office chairs. Yeah. Um, and moving on to proposed marijuana ordinance. Um, Jim, I'm going to let you talk about this one. Yeah. So you so you know we we sent the information over over to Rich. Um, and basically he said, you know, if, if, without it being an ordinance, it doesn't have a lot of teeth. Um, so, but the other thing is that he wanted to bring to your attention. So let me back up for a moment. If it's not an ordinance, it would then be a policy. And, you know, with a policy, it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of enforceability. But the one thing that he wanted to bring to, to mind is that an ordinance that carries a potential fine, you know, that does require the, the board to have a reviewing agency so that if somebody appeals the fine, you know, they have the ability to have a hearing uh, regarding that um, fine that's been brought uh, up against them. As a whole, he didn't really have any real uh, heartache over over the language that was chosen. Um, and he talks a little bit about, you know, the terminology, marijuana and cannabis. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, goes into that in a little bit of detail. But at the end of the day, I, I think, as Jay said, you know, the recommendation is that it really should be, you know, an ordinance to make it more enforceable. Now, there's obviously a process that uh, we have to go through to adopt this as an ordinance. Um, but that is the recommendation of the town attorney. Okay. And, and also as part of that, we would have to establish a review um, process. Right. Now, he said, you know, in his, in his uh, memory as the town attorney, um, we've never imposed a, a, a fine on anybody for a violation that he's aware of. Okay. So really, if there's no fine, then there's no reason for an appeals board. That's correct. Mm. So, that, I mean, that's certainly something for the, for the board to consider. Yeah, there's a lot of things to consider there. Yeah. So Good. if there's no fine, what happens? You just right. tell them it's against town policy and you're bad. You're yeah, bad. that's okay. pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, I think what you can, you know, yes. I, I think you can ask them to leave the property. After all, it's okay. town property. But beyond that, there's probably not much you can do. Okay. I'm just curious, like from an alcohol perspective, like how often do we have to confront people about alcohol stuff in town? Not very I think, often. Again, yeah. If I give you some historical perspective, we, we have have had issues when we had a lot of uh, adult uh, sports going on at 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 the, at the Herrick Park, and after the games, they sit around and have a couple of beers, etc. We simply we had we had this uh, set up. Simply had the resident troopers go over and says, "Hey guys, this is the ordinance. You can't do it." And that worked, and, okay. I mean, for the most part. Now, obviously, when we weren't there, you know, they might have had it, but it really eliminated the significant problem. Other than, uh, you know, some quote, teenagers going there at night, parking where it's dark, and having a couple of beers. But, yeah. Uh, but it, we, you know, we really haven't had that issue, and, and even when they rented it out, the town required that. Uh, if you do have it, then you have to be have to, you have to have insurance, et cetera, et cetera, so that the town is covered. So um, it 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 worked good enough. I I'm, I guess our thoughts was my thought was it, having the same mindset 
with with yeah. with partners. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Helpful. Yeah, that's just I, it's a new territory on this stuff. I really don't. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to go. <laughs> Well, it's sort of the harder to figure out too, right? If I'm, if someone's yeah. eating like a gummy bear, like <laughs> yeah, versus right. I'm sitting there holding a beer, right? Like, sure. how are you gonna exactly yeah. or, or ha yeah, eating a brownie? Put that on. Let me test it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would bet there's been a lot of brownies. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if, if you want, we can, you know, we can lay out the steps that are necessary to get this thing adopted as an ordinance. Uh, I can bring that to you at the next meeting and we can start down that path. Excellent. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yep. Okay, thanks for that, Jim. Stop You're signs welcome. on Hebron Road. Sandy, we put this back on here because if you remember, um, you and I had a question Actually, about <laughs> shoddy, shoddy mill. Oh yes, shoddy mill. And we and we couldn't remember whether or not the board discussed uh, putting a stop sign at the intersection of shoddy mill um, in Hebron Road in no. my discussion. We had, so in my discussion, no, no. We only talked yeah. about Loomis School and Webster. Right. That's it. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I did have conversation with our troopers last week, and th they feel like, although we don't have you know major traffic incidents there, it would definitely be safer if we added the stop sign there as well. That's what about a thousand yards away from yeah. the other stop sign. I mean, th one of the issues we currently have. I'm this is not, a non obviously non professional perspective, but you have traffic coming through at, at a pretty good clip from Andover, just shooting right through. If you have a stop there, a person is going from a stop position to a go position. The, that, quite frankly, before we did that, I, I would like to see how traffic adopts to that change. Because to me, uh, once you, you start off, obviously I'm not a 16 year old with a hot gas pedal, but, um, if you're starting off on that stop sign and going forward, in a thousand yards, you're, you're probably not at, at the same mindset or, or speed concept you were if you came flying through without that stop sign. And, and I, but it's a, it, is a, it is a long ways to the next stop sign. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Not, not too far from Webster, though, if you're coming that way. That's what yeah, I'm saying. It's, it's, well, it's or not far from Webster, Webster at all. Yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah. Personally, I, I, I would stick with what we have. And let's see how it works. And, and if, if, you, if, if at that point there's, there's an issue, and, and obviously this can easily be revisited, and, and, and we can move forward with that. But I, I, I would like to see how this other, this original solution works before we go forward with another stop sign. That's just my thought. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we, we I, could actually put a uh, coming from uh, he coming down Hebron towards Andover. We could actually put a stop ahead sign right. by uh, Shoddy Mill <laughs> just to get them on the brakes a little bit, getting well, ready just, for that. You're right, just before you know, that. Yeah. That, yeah. It, it, we don't have to put you know just put a you know stop ahead sign there and see if that tends to slow it right down. Because mm -hmm. I think the other way, Bob's right. It's going to be slow anyway coming from a dead stop at Webster, providing people stop there. Uh, by the time you get to Shoddy Mill, you might be doing 40, you know, that kind of thing. So it's mm -hmm. it will definitely cut the speed down going that direction. And I think just to stop the head sign might slow people down a little bit going the other way. Yeah. Just give them a reminder that they're going to have to hit the brakes ahead. And... So. Okay. So... Anybody feel strongly that we need that stop sign at Shoddy Mill? Not without seeing how the others work. All right. Okay. Likewise. All right. I think you've got your directive, Jim. Thank you. We appreciate that. And I had totally forgotten that we had talked about this, but I've been reminded and thank you. Um, I don't know about any others, Jim. No, that was it. Okay. Um, 
moving. Oh, and I stopped sharing. Um, moving on. Um, consider and possibly approve the heritage farm bid. Kathy sent out today a revised um, map. Oh, we don't have that. <laughs> yeah, that I gotta open that. I didn't I, look I at that. Share. I apologize. Hopefully, it's kind it's, of hard. To oh, packet add-on is that yep. the one? Yep. yep. All right. It's it's been ordered. It came up quick this time, Sandy. Ah. Okay. Uh, um, the map was kind of muddy, hard to read. Yeah, it was. I think it it's because of the way the um, Google um, satellite picked it up. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a shadow or something over it, but it lays out the location of the fields and um, includes the um, large narrow field at Herrick Park as well. Oh, okay. So um, they're actually bidding on seven fields. Um, we've got a date in there of October 15th, which is pretty much less than, yeah. it's 10 days from today. And farmers are in um, corn season. Um, and also scrambling to get hay in if they get a break. Right. If they get a break in the weather, they're scrambling to get another cutting of hay in. So um, is from a farmer really? perspective, Bob Mora is, or Bob yeah, well, I was going to suggest tonight that we extend that date further out. It's just. Yeah. Is October 31st far enough? Or that should do should, okay. Yeah, as, that especially should since it's for haying and haying doesn't start till spring anyway. So we've we've got right. time. We yeah. don't we've have to do time. this right now. Right. Cer certainly, certainly at least giving them to the to the end of the month is I think is reasonable. Yeah. Okay. So it's all of these, right? One big yes. one. It's one big, one big contract. One you contract. get it all. All right. Okay, anybody see anything? Whoops. Um, oh, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Yep. Okay. Do you remember how much we used to get? I did not ask that question. Okay, I, I have no recollection yeah, at all. So. Um, I, I don't think it would be smart to say a few zero. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't want, yeah, we don't, we do yeah. not want to disrupt the bidding process. Exactly. Exactly. Because it might be worth a lot more. We never know. Right. Um, I can only tell you that hay is not cheap. No, God, no. Um, all right. So um, can I have a motion to approve this bid package with the date change of response by October 31st. I'll move. Is that a Friday? I'll second. Now let's change that to October 29th, if that's okay. That yeah. is the last Friday yeah. in that's October. Friday. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bob Mora? Aye. Bob DiPietro? Aye. Mike Aramita? Aye. Kim Miller? Aye. Then the chair votes aye, so that is unanimous. All right. Uh, next item is the cemetery maintenance bid. Oops. It's back if the other packet. I'm sorry if I'm making you go bananas here. There you go. Why are you looking what yep. for I have a question. When you open the bids, we used to have a practice at my agency where we had witnesses present. Do you have witnesses when you open those seal bids? Um, in the past, we've had um, myself, the town administrator, 
and the department head um, who was involved with the department for the bidding. Um, did you have um, somebody like from the general public there? No. No. Just more than one person. Right. So I want to trust you, right? I'm I sorry. I trust you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, all these bid processes have always had more than one person. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this one, um, believe it or not, um, I had a funeral director stop by my office today um, to talk about his tax return um, and um, made some suggestions about our scope of services. Um, one was um, on item G that mowing must be done within one week prior to July 4th and Labor Day. Um, that we consider adding Mother's Day, Father's Day, and Memorial Day as um, mm -hmm. days that mowing must be done. Um, and then, um, let's see, then um, spring and fall cleanups um, must be done prior to Mother's Day. And um, yeah, where's that? Oh, the spring oh, cleanup hey, must be okay. done before Mother's Day. And fall cleanup doesn't have a problem. Um, and then the other one, um, and I don't know if it was this or the maintenance one. Oh, no, it's the other one under the sextant contract where um, they spread um, over graves, of where they um, recheck, re spread the loam over a grave that sunk over the winter. Okay, yeah. Um, he said that should be done in the spring. Um, I think, don't know this, we specified when. Um, so does anybody else have any comments or questions about this? Jim, do we do, we, the town of Bolton, do the snow plowing? Yes. Yes. Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And it says um, first cleanup and mow must be done before Memorial Day. Yeah. I think that needs to say Mother's Day. And you wanted to put in uh, within a week of Mother's Day, Father's Day, and Memorial Day. Correct. So you'd add that. You'd add that. That to G. G. Yeah. And F change to say first cleanup and mow must be done before Mother's Day. Yeah. Is yeah. Would, now, Mother's only, Day always comes before Memorial Day? Uh it's the second Monday yeah, in May, knows, I yeah. believe. Yeah, it always does. Yeah. Okay. So as it, long as it, it always falls that way, it doesn't yeah. okay. in some cases yeah. it um I have to tell you before climate change, we never mowed our lawn before Memorial Day. Yeah. Um and that used to be a big thing that after the Memorial Day parade, we'd go home and mow the lawn and rake it um, and then mulch it and then do the thatching. Um, but now that all gets done much before. Um, the only thing is Bolton can be very wet at Mother's Day. So, um, but I think it's important that because we get a lot of complaints um, about the condition of the cemetery immediately following Mother's Day. Yeah, we just, we don't want them to go in there with the heavy machinery and destroy everything. Right. Based right. on ground. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, so maybe we say that weather permitting. Or just say it and then we let them know that we will make that exception based on weather. Yeah. So that they bid it, they accept it. And if we tell them they don't have to do it, they don't have to do it. 
that's a better idea, Mike. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. All right, so we're down to J. Um, monument stones, flowers, shrubs, and flags will be treated with yep. respect and not damaged. Um, and again, when does our other contract expire? Is it November 1 or November 30th, Jim? I, no, I think it's the end of November. Yeah, I think so too. So um, this is Thursday, October 28th. Um, I would change that to the same day. We could open all the bids at the same time. The 29th, yeah. 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 I, I would change a little wording, Sandy. At the sure. end of the last, uh, was it J? Where it J. said, uh, uh, I don't see J. Uh, I'm sorry, I. Okay. Uh, where it says uh, treated with respect, and I would put and shall not be damaged. Uh, put the word shall in there because it is the the strictest form of requirement kind of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, and we might even want to put something in there that they're responsible for damage. Uh, you know, in that one thing because. If they damage it, they should fix it or pay to have it fixed. So I think something All right. should so be added. So instead of following the word flags, rather say will, say shall. And, and, um, and shall not be damaged. And something in there saying that the town, they will be responsible. For, should damage occur, it, it is their responsibility to repair it. Um, add another one, add, you know, something, another subset. Of yeah, I would leave IJ. it here um, and say, I'm um, just trying to think of some words. Anybody else got them? Um, Not damaged or maintenance and clean up. Repair. And, and, shall, and shall replace any damage, any of the buds. Uh, any of the above damaged items and uh, repair or replace or, yes. or replace yeah yeah got that jim yep okay and i i hate to add one more thing but Go ahead. after the, after that uh repair or replace at the town's direction uh, that way, if they want to just fix something and we don't think it needs to be fixed, it needs to be replaced, we can force them to do it. At the town's direction or, or to the satisfaction of the town of Bolton. That's fine. That, that's anything, that, anything that makes us be able to say you got to replace that stone rather than glue it back together. Or a proper, or yeah, a proper repair. Yep, that's good with me. Um, all right, moving on to sextant services. I keep calling it sextant, it's sexton. Um, This is the one where leveling and seeding of old graves that have settled. Um, yep. Andy, this is Linda. Do you have to vote on that prior? Um, it, since they're um, related, Linda, I think I'm going to vote on both of them together. Okay. But thank you for that question. Um, so let's see. Um, the one, the one comment that my funeral director suggested was leveling and seeding old graves that have settled um, at least once annually, or do we want it more than once annually? I think the way it's worded gives us the right to tell them if we look that you have some that need to be fixed, because they're required to fix all of them, and I think we can give them the, if we go over there and do an inspection, we can call them and say, we've got three or four that have settled. You better fix them. So how okay. about we leave it, how about we have leveling and seating old graves that have settled 
in in the spring and as necessary. Yeah. That, that covers sure. everything. That covers yep. everything. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um. And then the other um, comment that he had was the last item where it says we'll maintain and provide up to date maps to the town of Bolton each cemetery on a yearly basis. Excuse me. Um, he felt it should be quarterly um, because if um, I've shared with him in the past some of our um, issues with the um, current vendor. And he said that quarterly will give you time to react and get a correction in, whereas Right. If it's if it's on an annual basis, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. And there's no and reason is, why they can't provide that. Right. And this is just an up-to-date map, and it should right. be as simple as a photocopy of what he's carrying in his pocket. Exactly. Or she. Yep. With a new name written in a space. Exactly. It doesn't right. have to be a professional yep. map, but so. All right. Anybody have any? Um, no, I, I, I think this, and you're, you're changing that date to, uh, it is already, okay, it already this, this is one's the correct one. Okay, yeah. it's already done, okay. Then, then uh, I I'll, think Kathy I'll... just wanted to open bids three days in a row. <laughs> okay. She was testing you. Yeah. Ah, okay. So I, 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 I'll make a motion. We, we approve the, um, oh, is there, no. Nope, go ahead. That's it. This is That's just it. okay. That we that we approve the both uh, bid proposals to go out uh, for the maintenance and also for the sex tons uh, of the cemeteries. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Thanks, Kim. I thought we lost you. you disappeared. Oh, on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was chewing. Oh, there we go. Okay. You're trying to eat dinner. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you're not hearing my stomach rumbling. Um, all right. All those in favor? Bob Mora? Aye. Um, Mike Aramita? Aye. Kim Miller? Aye. Um, Bob DiPietro, are you here? Mm -hmm. He waves, Sandy. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Um, and I vote I as well. So that was unanimous. All right, moving on. Um, consider and act upon the auditor contract for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. Um, it's in your packet. Yeah. Um, it, it does not take action of the Board of Selectmen. It is the um, letter that um, the um, manager of the um, town needs to sign. So it, that's, and the auditor ad addressed it to Jim. So he is the signatory and he takes responsibility for these five pages of things. That's so we, yeah, we, we unfortunately titled it incorrectly on the agenda and just you know, Sandy pointed for some reasons, neither Sandy or I caught it, and uh, we, we didn't change it. Really, it's a letter of engagement. We're right. already under contract, uh, yeah, not. you know, to the auditor. So, how, we, how, we just we really wanted you guys to be able to re review the letter, right? How long are we obligated to this company? I believe, I believe one, one more, more year. year, yeah, this year and next year. So, the the budget audit of fiscal year 22 is the last that we have to deal with this individual. Um, I think it's 22. Under this contract, that is correct. Oh, is it 22? Is it yeah. this, this coming, the, 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 the budget the fiscal right year that we're right. in right now. Oh, okay. so that's right. So it's because he's got to do this this past year and this, yeah, that's the two years. Okay. okay. Yep. And, yep. and we, we absolutely have to 
look to a change. Um, well, I, I agree with you that we um, do want to change, but I'm not sure the Board of Finances of the appetite to um, accept a fee increase um, if the current individual bids again. Um, uh, I, I think we, it, it's like everything else, you know, the low bid is not always the best right. bid. And this is obvious. Right. And, and I'll leave it at that. And I hope that the board goes forward with looking for a, a an auditor, which is more in tune to a community like Bolton. And I'll stop there. Um, I have to agree with you, Mike. Um, maybe we'll have a finance committee and it'll be a little more re receptive to um, the sharing of experiences. Hopefully, <laughs> my, my hope at least. <laughs> yeah, mine as well. <laughs> okay, um, next is uh, for Selectman's report. Um, COVID-19, we've actually reached a plateau again. We've been at 344 cases now for a week. A week, that's great. Um, we have, um, and this is after being a red, a red category or a high spread town for um, three weeks in a row. We're now probably going to go to a yellow, maybe even a gray town yeah. um, this week if it if the numbers stay flat. So, um, and um, under other, I was going to tell you about the Columbia kids, but I've already done that. So, Jim, you're up. Okay. So you received my um, September highlights in your supplemental package today. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, Kathy McCavanaugh has completed all of the things that she needs to do to become a, a certified municipal official. Um, you know, right. Sandy was one of the first people to do that. And so, you know, she can tell you it comes with a, a, a bit of work. And so we appreciate, <laughs> yeah, we appreciate the fact that Kathy's taken the time to do this. It's not something we, we require, but it certainly uh, helps her in, in her quest to serve the town, the residents of the town of Bolton better. Um, we have started the process of conducting uh, the required annual reviews of supervisors. Um, you know, I know all of these people for a long time. I feel a little bit at a loss because I haven't worked with them as their supervisor for very long, but, but we're required to do this so that we're, we're gonna do the very best we can to make it uh, fair and equitable and an opportunity for information sharing on both sides. We are working on getting ready to begin the budget process and we are looking to have a supervisor, a mandatory supervisors meeting later on in the month. Um, there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers. We will help them to understand what our expectations are moving forward and Anybody that requests some assistance in figuring out certain portions of the budget, uh, Jill and I are committed to helping them do that to the best of their ability. We have uh, at least one person who is in a department head position that doesn't have experience with creating a budget before. So we're gonna have to you know, give them a little bit of assistance um, to do that. But we're, we're certainly happy to do that. Um, as reported before, the bridge is complete on Mark Anthony. I've actually driven over it myself. We have a final report from Jacobson and Associates. Uh, as you know, we engage them to, to do some periodic ins inspections through the construction process, just to protect the residents' interests who are spending a significant amount of money to, to build this bridge. Uh, it, it, the report does state that the bridge appears to be you know, constructed in according the design that the homeowners approved um, from Evergreen Construction. Um, and we've had some conversations about, you know, trash trucks and fire trucks. Well, the, the trash company, we sent them an email letting them know that the bridge was complete. 
and let them you know make their own judgment as to whether or not they would cross the bridge with their trucks and uh, they are comfortable doing that so they are they are utilizing the bridge um, we had discussions about you know larger vehicles that are town owned like fire trucks and you know the town engineer is of the opinion that he can't provide a rating for this bridge that says it will you know hold the weight of a certain size vehicle because there was no engineering that went into the design of the bridge um, and there's been you know there's not enough information for them to rate it at this point for instance if they were going to rate a bridge they would need you know soil data and all kinds of other things in order to be able to do that appropriately um, so you know that leaves us with a with a temporary bridge that you know we can't certify is safe for our fire apparatus to cross. Um, we've had conversations uh, with the fire chief. I think Sandy, you and I discussed that with the chief at uh, the unified command meeting last week. And I I think and Mike, you may be able to speak to this. The fire department is probably going to be working on pre-planning how they will handle a fire incident on the far, far side of the bridge. Um, the, the chief has talked about it, but I think he was expecting some sort of rating to come forward, uh, either from our engineer, their engineer, or somebody, because the the plan that's worked out is, it, it's okay, but I don't see it saving property as we could if we could get to the building. Well, I mean, that's part of the issue is they, they never had an engineer. Right, I, I realize that, uh, you know, whether, whether it be stress test or something, I don't, I don't know what will be acceptable to Bruce when it comes to that, but I, I know he is very reluctant to take uh, a million dollar piece of fire apparatus with six people or five or four people inside it across a bridge to a home that costs half that much if you know what i'm getting at mm -hmm. uh you know jet we're talking about the apparatus and and the people in it are the most important part to him absolutely and, you know that that could be disastrous if if it gave way under those kinds of circumstances so i i think at least speaking for him from what i've i've you know talked to him about i think he's he's expecting some sort of certification or guarantee by somebody that it can hold it and uh, otherwise it, it will be a back down to the bridge and drag the hose across and you know that kind of thing and and that's not good for anybody but i unfortunately think that's going to be the, at least in the interim the responsibility the what has to happen um mm -hmm. Jacobson will not no. certify that bridge without significant costs to the town. Right. And what about the individual that put it there? Don't they have engineers working for them? or They, they do. However, it wasn't included in the fee the residents agreed to. Oh, geez. So, yeah. so they, you know, they really built this, you know, under an empirical design. You know, they've been a bridge contractor for umpteen number of years. This is how they bridge build bridges, you know, on a daily basis. Yep. So they, they use their knowledge and experience to construct a temporary bridge um, we, without any, without any engineering. We, we can't put a little pressure on the company to give us something so that we feel safe with our equipment and personnel going across that. Uh, you know, inform them that, yeah, you put a bridge in, but we're still not going across it to these homes if there's a fire or, you know, are we going to take a snow plow across it with a, you know, a full load and we don't, we don't, we don't plow, we don't plow, we don't plow it. So that's a, that's a moot point, but you, you know what I'm getting at. Uh, Would I, they be willing to provide and uh, they must have had some estimate of what their uh, weight load so, would be. So, I mean, so that's not, know. that's not a, that's something that is not definitive. Um, I don't know if that's a basis to begin with. But. So we, we know that the bridge beams are capable of holding the load. 
Right. The problem is it's not just the beams, it's a system. It's a support. Right. It's, yeah. and, right. and the riprap that goes down there to prevent the undermining of the, the, the structure and all of that stuff. I, I, I understand a lot of it because I watched a, a YouTube or a documentary on bridge failures due to water and riprap. And I, I learned a lot about, <laughs> about bridges in that, that documentary. But I, I think we have to have to try and put pressure on them to have their engineer do something. I mean, they, they sold this thing to these people and, you know, these people are town residents and, and they owe it to these people to have put something there that will support the fire protection that they pay for. I, 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 uh, we certainly can discuss it with the residents, but um, I do know from interaction with the residents that they asked for it and their vendor put a price tag on it and they said no. Oh, oh God. Which leaves us in a rock and a hard place. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I still think we should you know, be the bad guy and go out, you know, tell their vend their contractor, you've got to provide it to us. You know, it's, uh, you know, they built a structure that if, I mean, if, if I was building a house and I was putting in a brand new type of foundation, even though it had been done a hundred times by some contractor, you'd still want to see engineering on it, Jim. Absolutely. As a building inspector. So I think this is no different that, you know, this is something new, something different. So, and as a building inspector, uh, we can't certify your thing to be used until you provide that information to us. Well, since it's on private property. But, but so is a house and everything else that gets built, that gets inspected by the building inspector. You know what I'm getting at? It's, it's a structure that was constructed. Did it have a building permit? No. no. Why doesn't a bridge require a building permit? The bridge does it. not fall under the purview of the building code. How do, how do we deal with that on an inspection basis? If I wanted to build a bridge uh, over the, the brook down here, how, how would I could just do it? Mm -mm. No, you need a wetlands permit. They had a wetlands permit. Yeah, but that doesn't, does that go into engineering? No, no, not not typically based on, not for the weight load. But but you know what I mean. When if I was building a private road on my property, and I wanted to put in a bridge, the town would want some sort of inspection of it. I would think. No, nope, it's not in the regulations, and it's not in the inland wetlands regulations. It the enforcement falls to Army Corps of Engineers. And we informed the residents of the requirements of the Army Corps for and -E -E permits and DEEP. That's thanks, Jim. And um, we also consulted with the town attorney who told us that once we have informed the residents of that need, for those permits, it is not our job as the town of Bolton to make them get them. Okay. So. Um, so what happens liability wise if one of the people that goes across that bridge is injured in the performance of their duty as a member of the fire department? Who's left holding this bag of what we don't want to talk about? Um, that was our recommendation to the chief to come up with a pre-plan for something that would happen there in the event that you couldn't cross the bridge. Which he's done. And, you know, like I said, I don't think it's a, it's, it's not a long-term solution. Uh, you know, I, I think we're going to have to visit this a few more times or something but you know he he's got a plan and you know it's the best plan that you can come up with without moving apparatus across it and uh i don't know what is it about a thousand feet 
from the end of the bridge to the last house, something like that. It probably is yeah, all of that. Know. Right. And, you know, uh, dragging a thousand feet of four inch hose is not a task that an individual can do. It'll have to be attached to a truck and dragged and then disposed of when it's done because it's ruined. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and the equipment that's got to be taken in there is not, you know, it, none of that stuff is meant to be carried by a human being a thousand feet under any circumstances. So it's, it's, it's a plan, but it's a plan for not a good outcome. Hey, what are you going to do? Let me do this, Mike, because this conversation is not going too far, too no, bad. You're right. Let me talk to my brother and Michael Rosaro and people who are familiar with this kind of thing and who has some input on this. Engineers. Anything hey. would be a help, Bob. Yeah, Anything. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I also think that um, when the homes on that street come up for uh, insurance renewal, that Ooh, yeah. we're going to see um, some requirements put on the individuals. Yeah, maybe at that point, they'll have to get an engineer. Okay. You know, I just... So did the insurance companies cover part of the bridge? No. No. Mm -mm. The bridge So why would they... The bridge... No, no. I'm talking about homeowner A and their personal homeowner's insurance. When the insurance company goes down there to do an inspection and says, where's the Army Corps permit for that bridge? And they don't have one. Okay. Now, that's not to say that I haven't spoken to anyone. They could be in the process of getting one. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. And that would make things, that Different. would improve the situation dramatically. Yes. It would, absolutely. So. So we'll wait and see a while, but you yeah. know, it's... To proceed, proceed with caution until that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bob, proceed with your sources of information, please. Yeah, that might be helpful, Bob. Yeah. And thanks for doing that. Yeah. So uh, continuing on the September highlights, this, the Yukon School of Engineering has taken on the project for looking at bringing a water line in from Manchester into Bolton. Um, Patrice and I met with them last week and we'll actually be having a site visit with them on Thursday this week. Um, the town engineer is forwarding them some plans, uh, mostly the plans for the, for the sewer line. Uh, I am told from uh, Mr. Carney over at Manchester Water, that there is a set of plans somewhere for this water line, which I need to get my hands on. Um, the one so coming from Manchester? What's that? The one coming from Manchester? No, there, there was apparently a conceptual plan put together. Right. And, hmm. you know, Bob would probably know more about this than I would. No. Um, yeah, Manchester Water put it together uh, in conjunction with Sindat and also uh, Mr. Taylor. That owned Michael it. Taylor, yeah. Oh, Michael yeah. Taylor across the way. And then that's so they could develop a, a potential cost as to what to do. And I, I think that was that was Manchester Water that put that put the plans together. So I think they're, they're the only ones that, I think they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're the only ones that have it. I'm sorry. Like so student. we're also working on getting the students a contact at Manchester Water so that they have somebody they can work with directly from there um, to move this project forward. You know, we anticipate that they're going to do something very similar to what the students did for us last year with the conceptual plan for the town hall building. So, and we've asked them to, you know, put their thinking caps on and think of, you know, innovative ways to you know, problem solve and, and try to get us what we need for now in the future and, uh, you know, try to do it at the lowest cost possible. So they're excited about that. We met them. They seem to be a bright group of uh, young engineers uh, and they're, they're looking forward to working on this project for us. 
Uh, we have uh, received several applications, I think seven to date for the assessment and collection assistant. Uh, we've be started to review those applications. We'll be looking forward to doing interviews here in the near future. So far, we do not have any applications for the recreation counselor, van driver, or board clerks. And so we're we're in the same boat as many others, trying to have uh, we're having difficulty filling positions. Um, there are members of the Fourth Town Economic Viability Committee that met earlier this week, working on that program. They had a conversation with. Uh, Pauline Yoder from Capital Region Council of Governments, who recommended that um, they apply for a FEMA recovery grant. They're in the process of working on that. And their idea would be that if they were able to receive funding from this FEMA recovery grant, they would use that funding to hire a coordinator to help move the projects forward and provide support to all four towns and the staff in, in the four towns that are working on different parts of this project. Um, and it looks like, you know, Coventry seems to be willing to be the grant administrator for the project, um, which would, I think, be excellent. Um, we did receive notification of our funding award from FEMA for Storm ICES. It's a, it's a little over $70,000. We had something in there, a little over $100,000 and our award is actually 94 and we get 70% of that. Um, so we're, we're doing uh, pretty well here. And again, you know, we're getting this money because of the hard work of a team of staff members that really, you know, did above and beyond what they normally do to help us get this information together. We have provided Demis with a preliminary damage assessment uh, from the last major storm, and we will wait to see whether or not there's a disaster declaration uh, and if funding would be available for that. If it does become available, we would have to go through the same process we did in filling out the paperwork and forms for ICES. And that concludes my September highlights report. Does anybody have any questions or, or comments? As usual, you've been a busy guy. Well, we try. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else to come before the board? I don't have anything else. And I'll move. We adjourn. Is there a second to adjournment? I see Mike Garamita nodding. <laughs> Kim's jumping up and down. Kim's <laughs> I second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Right. We're Good done. night, everyone. Thanks, guys. Good night.